Hello, I'm home from Chicago, back with you for your last week of coping with stress and violence. Um, you guys have done a great job. Uh, nobody should be stressing out uh, about grades. Uh, your papers were nicely written. Your Prezi presentations were um, wonderful. Your discussion boards have been very um, thought-provoking and interesting. <coughs> and you've all been doing a great job for the last eight weeks. Uh, just a couple notes about grades. Uh, the last day of class this week is Friday, so I've already put this on the announcement board, but remember to have your discussion board um, response up by Wednesday night tomorrow and your peer responses by Friday. If anything shows up wonky in your grade, don't worry about that. If you've done everything you're supposed to do, you're fine. Uh, I will be checking grades over the weekend, and if I find anything that I need to address with you, uh, before I submit the final grade or something that, you know, I'm not seeing something and I need you to resubmit, I will contact you. So make sure that you check your email um, on the weekend. But um, everybody's been doing fine with this class. This has been really a nice self-directed <laughs> class this whole eight weeks. You guys have done a fantastic job and um, just really impressed with your uh, level of intelligence and thoughtfulness. Uh, and thank you for that. Uh, so for this last week, you know that you have the one discussion board question. You know that your binder, your resource binder is going to be due. You submit that through the assignments upload. And then you are to read chapters 14 and 15 and overview the PowerPoints. Uh, just, just a couple things that I wanted to talk about in relation to um, what the chapters state. Um, it's interesting with um, peer clusters and um, those of you, uh, you know, that are teaching, you see this all the time from the smallest child to um, the oldest child, that uh, when we look at the group, uh, the group of the children that we hang out with. So now when we're looking at um, uh, peers, instead of using the term peer pressure, we're looking at peer clusters, peer groups. We're looking at the dynamic of the group and what is considered cool within a group. And um, so when you're looking at people now, depending on what group they may be a part of, that can affect what they're choosing to do or not do. And um, I have spoke to you before that, you know, I, I, I grew up with um, quite the punk influence from my older brothers. And um, because that was part of my peer group and that was accepted and that's what was validated and that was what was justified, I went in that direction. I could have easily gone into a different direction in a different group where something else was validated and justified. And you all have these same stories. Um, so I think that's really interesting that they're starting to look at it like that. Um, there were a lot of things that I did when I was younger that I did just because I wanted to impress my group. Just stupid. <laughs> and, you know, I'm lucky that uh, I came out of it, you know, I don't want to say unscathed, but definitely came came out of it. And um, I was thankful that I had a lot of um, great mentors and people to support me um, through that trying time. Many of you know, dealing with kids, but especially with teenagers, it can be really hard to get through and make progress, even with treatment. And sometimes treatment does, as they stated in the chapters and the PowerPoints, backfire based on the type of treatment that it is. Another thing that I wanted to bring up is um, the term triangulation, which um, some of you may not have heard before, but um, they bring it up in the in the, the chapters and the PowerPoints about how um, you know the stress of the relationship will cause like this this third party join in and and create like this close relationship that's not really the way it's supposed to be. Uh, sometimes it'll be a mother, dad, and a child, and um, the mother might create a close friendship with the child, and then the dad's kind of odd man out, or vice versa. We see this in relationships uh, that are people that are still together, and we see this in relationships where people are divorced. And it can be very hard when you're teaching to deal with that type of family dynamic. I just had an experience with this maybe two weeks ago where um, uh, one of my students, who I love dearly, a very sweet girl, had been living with her father um, the whole school year and had been doing wonderful in my class. And all of a sudden, the last three days um, before school was out, the mother wrote me this scathing you know, email uh, <laughs> about, about the child's grade. She was between an A and a B. And um, the child had lied to the mom about uh, the work 
and had said that she was uh, too sick to turn it in when she'd already told me and the father that there'd been an incident where a pet had gotten involved with the project and she had to redo it. And um, you get in that position where you're like, ooh, you know, how, how am I going to handle this? You know, it, how bad is this going to be for our, our student if we don't handle this correctly because of this strange triangulation that's, that's um, going on? So you could see that the mother was really the odd man out um, in um, the relationship uh, with the family and therefore was reacting out of uh, fear, um, ego. She was feeling um, definitely um, less than and she was going to do everything in her power to um, smite, basically, um, myself, the father. Uh, it, was, um, it was really interesting. And uh, we have to be professional in these situations. And um, uh, she had cc'd the principal and the counselor on it. And, of course, you know, I wrote back my professional email and did what I thought what was best for the child. And then the principal wrote me privately. And he's like, my, my God, you know what is that? And I'm like, that's, that's triangulation. That's what happens. These strange relationships and connections that aren't really the best for the child. But unfortunately, this family dynamic can cause all of this dysfunction and these problems. Um, we hear the term a lot, uh, triangulation uh, in substance abuse programs. And um, uh, people will do that. They will get somebody on their side and this person will enable while other people in the family are trying to set like firm boundaries with people that are using. And once again, if you have this family dynamic when you're trying to treat um, a, a, a child um, and help them, it can become very difficult when you have everybody on board and then you have this one person that's enabling. You'll also hear the term triangulation um, in relation to roles. Uh, where um, somebody in a relationship like a, a student might um, or a parent can take on the role of punisher or um, victim or martyr, um, which makes it hard for people to deal with because people have a tendency to react emotionally. So um, we can see a student, you know, do something or say something that seems punishing to a parent. Um, or they'll go into the victim role. You always do this to me. I'm never, I wasn't your favorite child, <laughs> those types of things. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, the martyr, the long-suffering person. And adults can do this, like I said, the same as students. Students can say, you know, my, my, I put up with my parents and their divorce, and, it, it's in, and I still get good grades, and I do this, and you're like, oh, boy. So um, really interesting terms and really interesting ideas about treatment and how treatment has changed over the years. And we are seeing um, more of looking at the whole picture instead of just focusing on the student, looking at the peer clusters, looking at the family dynamics, and figuring out how um, we're going to handle the situation based on that. It's a very difficult road, as you know. If you've been teaching, you've already been in situations like this. Um, so I think uh, chapter 14 and 15 are very interesting in that you'll find um, uh, the information uh, about this uh, type of uh, treatment and influences and training to be very interesting. Um, that is about it. I um, hope you have a great week. If you need me for anything, please contact me. I'm back online on a regular basis. And just make sure that you stay on task this week. If there's anything that you need to make up or contact me about, please um, feel free to do so. Remember not to stress about your grades. You're all doing fine. And if I have any questions, I will email you over the weekend. So just make sure that you check your email. Okay? Um, have a wonderful rest of your summer. Hopefully you'll get a little break before you start any more classes. Um, I hope to have you again sometime in one of our MyAd uh, classes. Uh, also, I hope you get a chance to have Professor Slater, my everyday teaching partner um, at my school, or my sister, Professor Galligley, um, who you will love. Uh, have a wonderful time, and I will talk to you later.